everyone welcome now that we know what the new specialized epic is gonna look like like the track i'm even happier that i got this one as a race bike for 2023 and as i'm building it i decided or i didn't decide i had to change the dropper this is a 31.6 that worked on my norco i needed a new one that's 30.9 and at that time i looked at what other droppers are available out there this was a PNW, the lifetime warranty one. What I ended up with is a new dropper that's made by Turn On Components. Let's check this out. This is a new company from Taiwan and kind of unknown, but uh, last year in January, Pinkbike published an article about this very dropper post. They call it Bunker for some crazy reason. And in our case, I looked for a dropper post that provided us with three different characteristics. Number one, my son wanted more than 150 millimeter travel. Number two, we wanted something that's a bit lighter if possible. And number three, something that would be easier to service or serviceable long term. And that's how I came across this. So let's look at the details. The diameter of the dropper, the actual drop, and whether you buy the remote or not, it's all on the box. And here it is, the dropper and everything else included. I also asked them to send me some spare parts and you can see here the keys and the bushings. This is the bar clamp for the remote, more about that later. And you're gonna get here a cable and a housing. Right on the user manual, you're gonna see one of the things that they are talking about as being very different from the other droppers in the market. And that is that the dropper post itself is built with a double air chamber that has some advantages. I'll mention that in a second. Otherwise, this is just a user manual that will tell you how to install the dropper. Interestingly, here at the back, you're gonna have a bit of troubleshooting. You need at least 280 PSI's in this dropper. And interestingly here, you're gonna have the service parts. Just like with the PNW Loam dropper, you can adjust the pressure right here under the saddle clamp. Saddle clamp that looks very similar to that offered by many other dropper posts. You're gonna see the branding here. This is called the bunker. Again, I don't know why. And as you scroll down, you're gonna see the minimum insertion and then more details about the dropper. This is a 30.9, 160 millimeter drop and the whole double air chamber design is patent pending at this point. When you think of 10 millimeter more stanchion, you gotta think about another 10 millimeters here at the bottom where the stanchion is gonna go. So this is a bit longer than PNW, but only by probably five millimeters, given that it's a longer drop. The actuator itself doesn't seem to be much different from what is used with the PNW. You're gonna have to use that same little barrel at the end of the cable. However, if for cartridge-based dropper poles like this or many other dropper designs, you have little holes here at the bottom, for the air to be pushed out and then sucked back in as the dropper moves up and down. What's special about this design with the double chamber is the fact that this is waterproof. So at the bottom here, this is perfectly sealed. You won't get air coming in and out. The problem with that is it would suck in the breeze, water, humidity, dust, and all that kind of jazz that ultimately makes it here into the grease, the keys, and the insides of the dropper posts. So that's another interesting advantage of this new design of a dropper post. It seems to me that this company is made out of a whole bunch of engineers that had a great idea and put it in practice. And if you look at some of their videos or documentation, you're gonna see that this is very similar to something like a Bike Yoke Divine, a dropper post that I've been using successfully for a couple of years now. And just like the Divine, this dropper post is fully serviceable. You could see that from the exploded view in the user manual. But what about the weight of this dropper post? At the beginning, I mentioned weight as one of my criteria, and this is my PNW Loam 150 that we used before. It comes up to 521 grams. This Bunker 160 30.9, comes up to 473 grams. So we're losing 50 grams and we're going 10 millimeters longer. If you were to go with their remote, even though they don't require a special remote, here's a bar clamp, 13 grams. Here is the dropper post remote, another 30 some grams, so 47 grams altogether. And again, they are providing you with the housing 
and the inner cable so here it is that would be 113 grams or 112 grams add that to the 473 so under 600 grams for this dropper fully installed so the weight is competitive but it's not the lightest out there some of you might think of the fox transfer sl as being lighter than this but take a look at 30.9 you're gonna see that you can only get a 100 mil drop uh, 9.8 would only give me 150 mil drop and again one of my goals was to go longer than 150 if possible so overall this is i think is a nice find unfortunately i don't have any codes for you guys for any discounts or anything you got to go on their website look for their facebook page or so just to look for deals on this uh, for installation this is nothing special like any other dropper that has the cable terminated at the lever this would be fairly simple I ended up installing it with a Shimano remote and here's the dropper you can definitely modulate how it comes out but if you fully press on the lever bang you get a nice big positive stop sound which some of us might like it there's not a whole lot of side to side play on the dropper and the installation like i mentioned it was just fairly easy so what kind of dropper pose do you use do you go for something fancy like this do you go for the cheaper one up pnw or things like that let us know in the comments below let me know what you think about a video like this and if you liked it don't forget to like subscribe and comment and until next time hope to see you folks on the trails Cheers, guys. Cheers.